All right, guys, let's, let's go over these setups again real quick. Gerald's uh, video thing got screwed up here a little bit. I'm going to make this shorter, though. Let, let's go over this since you guys already heard. Well, uh, I'm going to go right over specifically the setup. So, Gerald, are you good to go? All right, so what we went over yesterday, like I said, is that um, uh, we have four specific setups. These setups are in the trade room uh, under the PDF. We have two PDFs. Uh, we have the three trend waves that we have. And then we have this what's called corrective wave or the Babe Ruth home run trade. This is one setup you need to really get familiar with. Um, I'm going to do a really quick video on this because we just did went over this a second ago. So let's not make this too long. I'm going to show you how we can use the auto with these setups like this. The auto you're going to have on the members download page with this failure setup. So we got four setups, right? So um, let's make this a, a, a short version a video because I just did one of this 45 minutes yesterday and we did a video on this last Friday but um, we got the first four setups right we got the first wave trade we got the Momo trade we got the slingshot trade and we got this trade called the failure trade well I named it the Babe Ruth uh, home run trade setup like I said because of the potential of the big potential move these are big moves by nature and um, what we want to try to do is we want to try to catch these moves with the algorithms out there that's leaving the footprint. So here's how you set the trade up. Let's go over the specific way how to look for a failure trade. These trades are um, are specifically, uh, they come up for one reason. These zones are very, very, very important. These zones, like I said, have been back tested for over 30 years. And we know that these zones, statistically speaking, should come up with these four setups. So that's key. The key is the zones, and the key is the signal lines down here. This is my proprietary way how to enter the signal lines. Um, we do this, like I said, totally opposite of what educators do in indicators and platforms teach you how to trade. Uh, they think that because the market is overbought, uh, you try to sell the market, or they think because you're below, oscillators below 20, it's oversold, you need to buy the market. So just because the market's oversold below 20, in the last 30 years of my experience, um, the market can stay oversold forever. <laughs> you know, just because it's overbought at 80, the market can stay overbought forever. So that's just a bad way to use oscillators in general. You 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 don't try to catch, like I said, the falling knife and jump in front of a runaway train. But my methodology is totally different. I'm trying to short weakness to, to sell low by lower. I'm trying to short a lower high and sell low and buy lower. I'm trying to buy a higher low and then I'm trying to sell higher. So you know, we try to do opposite of what the public's doing. Um, they're trying to buy this, catch the falling night, buy, buy, buy kind of tra traders. On the way up, they try to short, short, short. And that's what a lot of oscillators and indicators do. Like I said, we do this totally opposite. So we have two PDFs that I go over these specific setups. Please review those. This particular setup is one of my favorite setups. So yesterday morning, um, like we were talking about um, when we were in the trade room, the second red bar, third red bar, I said, we're in a potential big failure possible setup to the downside. Uh, the analysis was correct. And here's how I projected that uh, big short uh, going into that big run to the downside. Uh, this projection, like I said, was 25 down to around 77. Um, so it was just a nice, big, healthy short on the S&P. What happens is, is one of our setups is a slingshot. And what a slingshot is, it's an FZR, meaning these are zones. You have a shallow zone, which are these three uh, lines, three green lines. We have a deeper zone, which is the two outer outer lines. So uh, what we'd like to do is, is that when you are into the outer zone or you're puncturing into this deeper zone, we're looking for a full zone retracement, trying to catch the WPTs or what I call wrongly position traders and try to look for a continuation. And so like this, you try to catch a, a slingshot, you try to get them into the zone and try to catch those counter trend traders and try to get that moved down. Well, what happens when the slingshot doesn't qualify? Because when you get into this deep zone, you're using this small oscillator down here as your signal line. So for you to get really great at the setups in the trade room, what you need to understand is zones are key. These zones have been statistically back tested for 30 years. They are key to trading success. So with the zones, I use my proprietary way to use these oscillators or what I call signal lines below because 
we use them totally opposite of what the overall educators and 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 the public use utilizes these for. We're not trying to sell the high or buy the low. We're trying to short the low and buy lower, etc. Buy high, sell higher. So what started this trade then is that once we got into this lower zone, I was on the microphone yesterday, and here's the two things you need to understand. When you get when you start puncturing this lower zone, you need to watch these signal lines. These signal lines, the first one you want to look for is this thin signal line. It's a thin magenta. I got two of them. I got a thick magenta and a thin magenta. These are on your workspaces already set up. And so and I go with these in the PDF. For for a for a slingshot, you come down into the zone, right? And then what we're doing is you're coming down in the zone. And then what you want to do is you want to see this uh, signal line go below 80 and jet right back up through, I mean, below 20 for buys and jet back up through uh, 80, right? But what happens if the small signal line is 80 or below, when that green bar reversal happens, then you have a reject in or no slingshot trade. Because when you're in that deeper zone, you only have the slingshot or the failure trade available. We don't have a momentum set up. We don't have a first trade set up, my other two setups. The only two possible trades is a slingshot or a failure. Well, that's the first indication, no slingshot. The big one is my thick signal line though. I got this proprietary way of looking at, at, at these oscillators, okay? I like to look at them at, at different as levels, levels of, of strength and levels of weakness. So what I put on here, I have the standard uh, 80 red, standard 20 oscillator, but then I put my proprietary 65 and 40. Now what these are, these are levels of strength and weakness. If, if I'm below, uh, 65 for momentum cells, that's weakness. I'm above 40, it's strength. Well, I can use it for my failure trades too. If my signal line, my thick signal line, gets below minimum 40, there's weakness in this market. If it's coupled with my slingshot doesn't get pulled and gets rejected, and I get a red bar reversal, that's the exact bar that a candle or a Rinko per se that the market should start rolling over. Okay? So, you can see that when we got into the zone and how I projected this going lower before it happened was that I noticed that we got into the deep zone looking for a slingshot. My first indication, my thin signal line went below 20, did not break 80 before we had a red reversal bar. Consequently, we went to a weaker market because the thick signal line got below 40, minimum 40. Now the best if it can stay below 20, which I'll show you in a second, or above 80. But that's your two indications on the signal line. That's your major one. This has to happen. This ha your, your, your large signal line has to be below 40 or it's not a failure trade, minimum. It has to be above 65 minimum or it's not a failure trade to the upside. It has to be. Okay, that's a rule, right? And you can't get pulled in on a slingshot either. So those two things got to happen. So then the market uh, pulls in and we get that nice little move to the downside and we start cranking down. All right, and that's a huge potential trade. Like I said, the pull-in was right up there around the 25 and three-quarter level and got as low as what, the 78 and three-quarters level just for a big hit in the S&P. So then the market comes down and we get into the deep zone again. We get a Momo trade here. We get we start coming into the deep zone again. All right, okay, so what do we got to look for? We could possibly look for a one. The first thing we look for is a slingshot trade. The thin signal line has to get above 80, which it did. But see how it stopped at 40 when you got a green bar reversal? It stopped at 40. It's got to get below 20 to pull us in on a slingshot. So these failure trades are easy to see because if it stops above 20, but that's not even the most important one, the, the thick signal line is above 80 now. Remember, it's got to be minimum above 65 for failure to the upside. So I'm above 65. Now we're in a stronger position in the market. So once it's in a stronger position in the market, the signals line is a stronger position, and my thin signal line didn't pull in the slingshot, because I only have two trade setups. It's not a first wave trade. First wave trades, I only got four setups in the whole trading room. The first wave trade is going from green to red. This is a first wave trade. I mean, red to green, green to red, the first wave, that's a first wave trade, so it's not this. It's not a momentum trade. Momentum trades have to happen away from the shallow retracement. It can't get into the zone for Momo trades. So it's not that. So the only two trades you have when you get into this deeper zone, it's either going to be a failure trade or it's going to be a slingshot. Well, it's not a slingshot because I went through up through 80, but I didn't get back down through my minimum 40 or most importantly, importantly my 20. 
and my large oscillator right here is above 80 minimum 65 right here so now I am golden for a buy setup sure enough there's a green reversal bar and then we crank from 89 a quarter potential all the way to 18 another big move in the S&P this is one that I was all over top of before it happened members in the trading room um, Aaron I know you were in here uh, Larry I don't know if he's logged in I'll see Larry but Aaron you were in here yesterday and we were talking about this as it progressed I said we're looking for a failure setup and we were right here into the deep zone and um, we were able to capture this move to the downside how do we do that before it happened well we got into the zone and if you guys want to scroll back up and look at the comments when we were doing it um, we got into the zone and we had a green bar reversal well very simple we know that slingshots have to do what we got to get below 20 for buys back through 80 it got rejected right at my 80 mark that told me right there possible failure trade but that's not even the key point the key points my large thick signal line my large thick signal line I gotta be at least below 40 I love it below 20 the best but if it stays below 40 I can take the first red bar reversal that's exactly what happened the fill when traders start getting short yesterday in the live room start getting short at 05 right there 05 I think Aaron you said you got short at 03 which is still good but 05 and it got down as low as uh, 83 on that push so just another big push on the S&P so you know this these are what's called failure trades right the failure setups that we want to look for in the deep zone because the deep zone we want to make sure that there's only two setups that can happen it's either going to be a slingshot or a failure trade where first first wave trades are easy this is where you go from red to green right and there's a way to qualify the first trade too I want to be in a stronger position on my oscillator there too I want to be above uh, 80 or below 20 to get that big push that first wave even had some nice move 95 one of my setups to 18 also but uh, they're easy, first waves so this wasn't these are not first wave trades and they're not momentum trades because momentum trades have to be away from price like this away from shallow retracement away from shallow retracement so my point is failure trades are easy to spot because there's only two trades that can happen on my methodology I only have four trades that's it to learn in the trade room the way it is the first wave is it's so so simple that anybody can pick that up right away and that's just green to red red to green looking for the first wave momentum very simple you're away from if you're red you're selling if you're green you're buying if I'm away from shallow retracement and I got the oscillator below 65 for sells or above 40 for buys that's easy and then I've got uh, my other trend would be the uh, slingshot that's easy if you come into my zones and my oscillator goes below 20 and above 80 or for for buy, for, for buys or for sales if it goes above 80 and back below 20 for sales like this big one here huge slingshot then that's a slingshot well failures are the same way failures failures are saying it's a failed slingshot that's all it is so what it does what happens is when you get to these outer zones it's a failed slingshot the slingshots not falling through below 20 up through 80 the slingshots not falling above 80 doesn't get through 20 and the failed slingshot over here does not follow through goes below 20 rejects at 80 again just like the the third one but most importantly your the thick signal lines the most important on my 40 and 65 threshold if you are buying a a failure trade it's got to be minimum above 65 if you're selling it's got to be minimum below 40 I love them above 80 for for buys and below 20 for sales now what we can do then right is uh, what's going to be on the uh, members download page is we can you can use that for an ATM chart trader which I put up on the previous video but I'll show you real quick and then it will go into the auto version of this but a chart trader what you can do is chart ninja ninja put up chart trader for one reason they put up chart trader so you could use it to auto automate your uh, uh, to, to manage your trades so if you use let's say a uh, this is a 20 Rinko bar. I like going five above for a stop loss before adjust on any Rinko bar you use. I love to look for failure trades on the 12020. But then your profit target, let's say if you put down a 12 tick profit target, right? Or a 15 tick, let's say 12. You can put this all the way up to what a thousand or what have you. So your trail can 
you're, let's say you're doing two contracts, you put your stop loss as your first target, then you can go in here on your ATM and under the PDF that I just sent you guys, I have videos how you can program this, um, this uh, uh, ATM for NinjaTrader. And what that does, it's, an, it's a trade management system where you can go your first profit target, let's say 12 or 15 ticks, and then I'll go break even plus one. And then as it's going for the second target, you're going for your next thousand tick target. It's automatically going to adjust your targets based upon the frequency and the profit triggers and your, your stop loss will automatically adjust using their ATM. Now, like I said, under the second PDF, I have links how to do this, but you can also uh, just use these as a reference guide and, 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 and sim trade them, see how you like them. Um, if you really want to hone down, look for these failure trades on the weekend for those at least some software. I would do a market replay like on this day. Just do, just do this day if you want, do yesterday. Do uh, do August the 9th, and then replay uh, these three setups, and then hit Chart Trader when this pull-in bar comes, this pull-in bar comes, this pull-in bar comes with those parameters I gave you, and then you can loosen it up to try to catch the majority of these failure trades. Because after you hit that button once, you sell the bid or buy the offer. It's a trade trade management software. You don't touch it. It has your stop in. It has your targets in, and it trails. It has a trailing stop in for you with the Ninja Trader ATM. It's a pretty neat feature. Now, if you don't want to do that, then what I developed is, and this will be on the member's download page, I developed an auto way to auto or self in. So a, a way to do it is, so this is where we had our setups yesterday. We had the big sell here at uh, 844. We had the big buy there at 1228. And we had the big sell here at 1532. So what we can do is we can auto in on the setup. So these vertical lines are where the failure trade started. There's a sell, there's the buy, there's a sell. I got 12 ticks on these targets, okay? 12 ticks on uh, each target uh, as far as each one of these. So what you can do is you can turn this on and I have, I'll have a separate PDF with these specific uh, settings um, because you know, this is a really simple strategy. All we're doing is selling uh, weakness and buying strength when a failure trade comes up. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll have those settings in the PDF when we release the software on the members page here soon. But what it'll do is, is this is where it got weak. So you could turn the software on right when the failure trade gets pulled in. And here's the potential you get. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 there. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 trades. So 24 trades, uh, it, this is showing one contract, so that's 24 trades, and it's 12.50 a tick on 24 trades, and that is showing 12 ticks. So 12 ticks, that's $150 per trade, times 24 trades, that's potential $3,600. Uh, if you catch, obviously you won't catch all these, but that's potential $3,600 just on three swings on one contract on the ES. Now obviously you're not going to catch that. My point is, that's a potential we have. If you're doing 12 ticks, that's $150 per each hit, right? I mean, each target you hit. Now, you can also do it where you get short here in one contract, and it'll trail by not doing uh, multiple contracts, where you can trail it, and it will go until, uh, it will go until, uh, it will go break even plus one, or not even break even if you don't want it, 12 ticks, 15 ticks, and then it will exit the second contract out the violation of the ATR. But my point is, you can you can use the, so this is where it started on our failure trades right here. That's started the failure trade. You can use NinjaTrader Chart Trader with those uh, ATM to automatically trail this yourself, right? You hit the buy button there, hit the sell button there, automatically does it for you. Hit the sell button there. You know, that's set up on NinjaTrader already. Or you can, do it where you turn the auto on and you just try to capture some of these moves. You know, that's going to be up to the trader when to turn the software off, you know. Uh, but I, how I'm educating traders to look at this is you can turn this auto software on right when a failure trade happens because those are the potential Babe Ruth home run hitters. So I love using, uh, in conjunction with the software, the Babe Ruth uh, moves on this type of software because you got such big potential for these moves, all right. So 
Um, and these are projected what you'll, the simulation would, the simulation, the historical test, when you see these, these are pretty much where it's going to be live because I put them at the high and the low of the price bar. So it's simulating live trading plus or minus a tick or so. So when you see these fills, these are not um, where when you turn this thing on in sim or live, it's going to be pretty close to what you get when you when, when you put this on because I, I added slippage in these trades. All right, so that's how you can utilize this. What we'll do um, when Jiro wraps this thing, we'll have this on the members download page. I already have two PDFs down already. I, I got the methodology done. The methodology done for you guys. Now what I'm going to do, the, the next PDF which I'm working on now is that it's going to have only settings, specific settings. So it's it's not going to be any dialogue with it. There's not going to be commentary with it. It's just going to have settings. That's it. Period. All right. It's going to be just simply two or three pages, and it's going to say this is the stronger, weaker. Uh, trade setup and then you know here's how you turn it on here's the settings you can use here's how you adjust your ATR and that's it all right so I'm just gonna have one specific setting PDF okay secondly we all have members have we have uh, two other strategies out there we have a sim wave strategy and we have a sim momo strategy all right so the sim wave strategy and sim momo strategy what I'm doing is I'm combining them both to make it very simple all right, and I'm going to add four toggle switches. Each toggle switch is going to be very simple. So we're going to have this strategy for you guys to get into these setups that have a lot of a lot of move to them. Like this is where the failure started. This is where the failure started. This is where your failure started. So you can either use an ATM that Ninja offers, or you can use this strategy in to take trade, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. Right. So we can utilize that. For my with my specific four setups then I'm going to combine which I'm doing now and it's this is going to be the members download page I want to make this very very simple since this strategy here is so simple it only has a couple ingredients listed inside of it because I'm strictly trying to sell momentum and buy momentum when a failure trade or a Momo trade comes up or a slingshot trade then you can turn this on and take advantage of it or use an ninja trader ATM then so this is very simple so the more I thought about it and the more feedback I got back from members is what about combining my sim wave with my sim uh, 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 my sim momo combining it into one strategy which I'm doing and I'm just going to have toggle switches I'm going to build everything into the code all the parameters are going to be built into the code where you're not even going to see the parameters it's going to be my slingshot or FZR trades drop down when you menu with an entry technique with my signal lines that you can you, know, you can change the signal lines to be faster or slower and then my last one I'm actually adding the failure trade into it also and so you're gonna have four toggle switches and you are have your targets and your ATR trail and and your your zones and that's about it there's no other variables to look at I'm gonna make it very simple for you guys just like this strategy right here it's very simple it's pretty much I don't have a lot of variables in this thing it's strictly pretty much you add a couple variables here add your ATR your length your targets, your break even, if you want break even or not, that's it. Very straightforward. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to catch these moves here and by turning it on and letting the software automation do the work for you. And some traders don't like automation. Well, that's fine. Just use the ATM that Ninja has and I put that in a PDF where you just buy the offer here, sell the bid here, and just let it manage the trade for you. So we have two type of traders. We have automation traders, and then we'll have your um, you will have your traders that uh, strictly use Chart Trader on these specific setups. My point is this: is that failure trades are are they work on all markets? I send out a lot of NQ. Works great on the NQ. Love it on the NQ. Love it on this on the on crude oil. Love it on gold. I love it on all these different markets. 
you can you can literally just look for a failure trade for these Babe Ruth trades and do very very well in the room by itself because what you're doing is you're allowing the zone the, the the deeper zone to set the trade up with the signal lines below how I use it for stronger and weaker markets knowing my specific rules of using the large oscillator as my key level and my small oscillator with my key proprietary uh, strength and weakness uh, levels and then these zones are so accurate that you can utilize that um, you can utilize that to your benefit of just looking for those setups as far as that goes so you know that's something that that uh, that on the members download page like I said we will have that uh, uh, that strategy wrap for you um, um, here when I get this over to Jiro I'm just adding in the rest of the reversal targets and now you can do this uh, this other auto in without just turning it on and turning it off on a weaker and stronger markets what this means is this I did add a toggle switch on a reverse did I just delete that chart Let's see I did add a toggle switch on a reverse here where what happens is is when we get a transition from here when it gets a transition from there when it violates the ATR um, you can also utilize that around the clock it, the first trades are typically the best you can do it that way also if you want to let this thing run around the clock so I'll show you how to do that in the PDF also all right Gerald go and shut that off